is something you might want to note when you're thinking about the synthesizer. Um, I'm always, I've, I was always sad that the oscillators didn't have an output. If this was truly more modular, the oscillators would have an output somewhere that, somewhere here that you could direct to various inputs, but they don't. They skipped that. They didn't think that was important. I don't know why. If you don't have oscillator output, you can always use the headphone output and plug that into one of these inputs to get a sort of oscillator distortion. And you can get some distortion effects with some uh, experimentation, like for example this. Whereas normally it would sound like this. But with the input turned up, Of course, messing with the oscillator waveforms and pitches, as well as the filters, cause those sounds, the resultant sounds, to act as a modifier to the cutoff point of the filter. So it creates a sort of feedback loop, and you can come up with some really interesting sounds. <laughs> that would all sound like this without the phone's output coming into the cutoff point of the low pass filter. So there's a reason that this synthesizer has the uh, reputation for being a sort of abrasive and grating synthesizer. It's because it has these sorts of functionality. Um, you have the initial gain input for the voltage controlled amplifier which is Bortastic, in my opinion, but you know, once again, you can control um, the volume of the synthesizer with a modulation source. You can use modulation sources to control the amplitude of the synthesizer using the voltage controlled amplifier input, initial gain input. Um, and of course, you can control the amount of those effects. Again, using our fun little VCA, so you have to use the VCA to control the, v the actual VCA. Um, let's again do the boring arrangement where we set up the mod wheel to control the volume amount of the modulation source going into the VCA. Exciting! Okay. So we have the triangle output from the modulation generator. The triangle output is directed uh, via the pre-wiring to most of the modules anyway, but you can also use it to go elsewhere uh, as a modulation source. And the same with the square wave, which is not pre-wired, which is why it's um, great for the patch panel, because then you can direct it to the places you want it to be, overriding the pre-wiring or using it in combination with the pre-wiring. Um, it's particularly important in the sample and hold to get the standard sample and hold noise, and I will demonstrate that right now. Okay, sample and hold, as some of you may know and some of you may not, um, sample and hold module is a device that takes samples of noise sources and um, samples a voltage level and then relays that voltage level to whatever you direct it to. Um, in a pattern that is set by a clock input. Okay, that um, confuses even me. Let me just show you what we do. We take the noise output, direct it into the input of the sample and hold. Not a tone source, not anything else. We take a noise source because it's not taking the sound, it's taking the voltage levels. Then we need to assign a clock. The best clock we have, there are actually several options for clocks. Um, but the best option is probably the square wave output of the modulation generator. We could also use the intermittent switch, but we'll get to the intermittent switch. Okay, so that's put in there, and um, then the output we direct to, um, well, we direct it to either pitch or uh, filter cutoff or 
VCA. For fun, um, let's put it into the total so we can use it to control multiple filters. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we have to make the clock more clock right, more clock like because apparently the pulse that comes out of the square wave modulation generator output isn't as good as it could be unless it is a narrower pulse, like a, a smaller percentage or a higher percentage of um, pulse width. And so then we turn up the total inputs. And the sample and hold is taking random samples of the noise input, um, choosing and holding them with the clock input and outputting them as a modulation source and that's why we're getting these super cool sounds out of the filters. We can also use it to control the pitch of the oscillators. So, you can get all kinds of cool noises out of the sample and hold. The envelope generators have both a normal output and a reverse output. So wherever you want to direct an envelope, probably to the filter, I'm just going to guess, um, you can direct a different envelope than the one that is pre-wired, which is usually envelope generator 2 to each of the filters. You can direct envelope 1 to one filter, envelope 2 to the other filter, and get different envelope effects, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also do a reverse envelope to one and a uh, normal envelope to the other, or you can send the same envelope to two different filters, one being the reverse, one being the positive. Um, you can direct these envelope the envelope generators in whatever way you please. And of course, the envelope generator doesn't have to go to a filter. It can also go to the frequency or the VCA. And so the combinations and routings for envelope filter, envelope generators um, are really convenient with this synthesizer. As far as envelope generators are concerned, you could trigger envelope generator one with the output from the modulation generator, the square wave output. Or you could also use the intermittent switch, which is over here by the mod wheel output. And then every time you press that, it will trigger envelope one. So in this case, we have the intermittent switch triggering envelope one, which is currently directed to control the pitch of the oscillators. I'm just pressing the intermittent switch each time you hear the pitch change. And of course, the pitch it changes to is controlled by the envelope generator one knob. Since there's no input into the frequency input, we are just controlling how much envelope generator one is controlling the pitch, and it's not triggering until we trigger it. It's not being triggered by the keys, it's being triggered by the button. So, we get to decide what pitch it goes to. So that's kind of a cool effect. And then we have the keyboard section over here. Um, the keyboard section has a VCO2 CV in. So let's take a listen to what we can do with that. We'll plug something into that. Let's control, let's control it with the mod wheel. That's exciting. Okay. This basically is just for VCO2. So it's not going to control the pitch of VCO1. And here's what it sounds like. <laughs> So it kind of separates out the oscillators. If you had another keyboard that you wanted to control VCO2 with, then you could get a sort of duophony out of the synthesizer, which, you know, I don't know, that's just two keyboards playing as far as I'm concerned, if you need another keyboard to control the other oscillator. But whatever, you could do that. Yeah.